Oh, hello. How y'all doing? It's Tuesday, and it's a very dark Tuesday. There's nothing on screen. Well, I did say that we were going to be doing something a little different. And by a little, I mean a lot. Let me push a button. A button has been pushed. If everything goes to plan, things- Hey, there we go. <laughs> things are on screen. And this, well, this uh, is teeny tiny little stream, what I'm going to do, about, yes, yes we are live, um, about a computer that I put together for very, very cheap, and it's like 300 pounds, there'll be a breakdown of the uh, specs, don't you worry, but hey, we're at the desktop, <laughs> so... Why put a cheap PC together? Well, because everyone, or people who like to play video games, like to have money to buy video games with. Hey, Artheron! And chances are, um, well, if you can save a little bit on the, um, on the computer itself, you can probably, probably, um, get yourself some, um, well, you can get yourself all the games, I suppose. So, let's get it started with what I got. And I'll show a list with the prices a bit later on. Don't you worry. So, I've seen time and time again on um, YouTube, plenty of YouTubers going, Oh yeah, you can totally... Um, I, I, well, the, the operating system's in Portuguese because I'm Portuguese. So, yeah. <laughs> And it's also a way for me to show all the game developers out there that, hey, not everyone's got their operating system in English. So, all right. But yeah, I've seen YouTubers talk time and time again about how you shouldn't go for the cheapest possible PC. You should always spend a bit more so you can upgrade easier later on. But what if you can't or... You know, what if you can't actually spend a little more and you're actually tight for cash? Or if you just want something that'll be as good as it gets for as cheap as it comes. And that was my idea. <laughs> you should put it in Mongolian. No, no, no. I'd like to be able to understand what's going on. So, these here are the specs. You can see the uh, bookmark bar there. The case is an Inwin 301. It's the black version, this one right here. It looks great. It's not the cheapest. I could have certainly found a micro ATX case that would be cheaper, but it probably wouldn't have looked as good. And it's not a perfect case. Far from it, actually. Uh, it's got no air intakes at the front. It's got this little um, honeycomb design on the right side, and that is probably going to be part of your intake, because besides that, uh, yes, it has the uh, pampered glass side panel, so you can see the insides, uh, but besides that, it's only two 120mm fans that it'll take at the bottom here. And it's got these push tabs for cable management, it's like, this is how it would look, except it doesn't come with any fans at all. So, yeah. So, basically, you have the power supply fan that's coming up from here. That will be your sole exhaust if you don't put any extra fans. I had two 120mm lying around, so I put one here and one at the back. And they seem to do the job very, very well. Uh, yeah, it's it's a really nice looking case and it certainly helps the PC look like... Uh, or not look like it's a really, really cheap... PC. Yeah. Uh, the case itself, X and I Gamer, thank you very much for the follow. Um, the, um, yeah, the, the air intake for the case is just horrible, uh, so yeah, just don't even bother with fans at the front unless you get those really high static pressure ones. It's really not that great. Um, but yeah, it's got two USB 3s at the front, some audio connectors, it's, uh, the LEDs for the front actually connect through a set of power cable. That was the first for me. Uh, but yeah, it 
does a very good job of making the PC look all right. It looks it doesn't look like one of those cheap PCs that you see YouTubers put together in like those Ro uh, Rosewill cases. It does a very good job of that. So inside the case goes the motherboard. And the motherboard I found on eBay for about 40 pounds ish. And for 40 pounds, I got this micro ATX uh, Intel desktop board DQ77MK. What it does is basically it's a um, Sandy Bridge slash Ivy Bridge um, motherboard micro ATX. So it fits inside the Inwin and it supports. Uh, 1333 and 1600 uh, megahertz RAM, or mega transfers, I should say. Uh, yeah, it takes up to four, uh, maximum is 32, but I only have 16 because it's a gaming PC. 16 is kind of where you want to be, so yeah. And it's uh, completely unremarkable. Uh, the one thing that I will point out is if you do buy one of these on eBay like I did, make sure you upgrade the BIOS because the one that I got was woefully out of date. Uh, it was really, really old, and it took the system over a minute to actually boot. So that wasn't cool, but as soon as I upgraded it, lo and behold, you get however many seconds that was since you saw the Intel logo disappear. Uh, 2013, out of date. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, that motherboard uh, runs this processor, the Intel Core i5-3470. This is Sandy Bridge, quad-core, four threads, nothing spectacular to it. Uh, on Linux, if you just check it, uh, the max frequency is what Intel reports as the turbo, and as long as the cooling is good enough and your governor is set to performance, you're always going to be around the max turbo. Uh, it's a 77-watt TDP. Which is good, because I, the cooler that I got for it, also very, very cheap, uh, is only, I think, 95 watts is the max that it supports. So, yeah. the It also, of course, supports the exact same RAM configuration. Nothing spectacular here. It It's a quad-core 3.6 gigahertz quad-core with no hyper-threading, so you don't even have to worry about Spectre all that much. You're certainly in far less danger um, if you disable all the mitigations, which you should, let's face it. And of course, cooling this uh, processor is this guy. This is the Cooler Master Hyper 103. It's the little brother to the Hyper 212 Evo, the ubiquitous Hyper 212 Evo. Uh, it's only got three uh, heat pipes. Uh, it's got a 92 millimeter fan with some LEDs, because, yeah, it's got to have some LEDs. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention the processor. I paid around uh, 30 pounds for the processor and the 16 gigs of RAM and a motherboard that I couldn't use. Uh, I ended up not being able to use that. That's why I got the DQ77. But, yeah, this one cost me 12 pounds. 12 whole pounds of cooling yes N no rgbs it's just the blue the leds are just blue and it does a very good job of keeping the processor cool but they say that the base is engineered to minimize cpu contact gaps and stylish aluminum fins provide excellent heat dissipation uh-huh if you squash those heat pipes and they actually made direct contact with each other minimizing the gaps obviously it would actually be a much better um, cooling solution, but hey, aluminum interspersed with copper it is, and it, I'm tearing them a new one for that, but it's actually a very, very reasonable um, teeny tiny little tower cooler, and it's it supports a lot of stuff. No AM4, though. Although I'm sure some um, creative minds out there have already put their... Um, 3D printing chops to the test and probably uh, created an adapter for this for the AM4 motherboards. The RAM, as I mentioned earlier, it's nothing special. It's an SK Hynix uh, kit of 1333 RAM, but as you'll see in a moment, it's actually running a bit faster than that. Uh, I got the, what is it, the H9, which is 1333 with a cast latency of 9. So that's very, very nice. It's actually very, very uh, tight on the timings. Uh, 
All of this, of course, is very well and good, but you kind of need, if you're building a gaming PC, you need a graphics card. And you can't really beat an RX 570 when it comes to the price performance at this point. Yes, it does take um, an extra 8-pin power connector, but it's it's the Asus ROG Strix RX 570. And it's Polaris 20, it does support OpenGL 4.5, although maybe Mesa will surprise me, let's see. Um, what's the uh, GLX info? No, that's not it. There you go, wrong keyboard. GLX info, grab version, learn to type. There we go, okay. Uh, do, 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 do. OpenGL 4.5, OpenGL 4.5. Okay, so that bit is accurate. Though I wouldn't be surprised if the fine, fine folks uh, working on the Mesa drivers uh, got 4.6 working at some point. That would be really nice to see. Uh, that resolution mismatch is caused by the capture card, the USB 3 capture card. It's... Uh, this is about as good as it gets. I, I need to find a proper one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, mind the uh, slight blurriness to the text and everything else. It, it's not as noticeable once I get into the game benchmarks, but it, it with text, it, it's actually a bit bad. <laughs> okay. So yeah, Sonar X 570. Uh, this one cost me 75 pounds. Um, I had to pay an extra 10 uh, in shipping, but for 75 pounds for an RX 570, when they go for about twice the price right now, it's kind of insane. It's actually uh, really, really good. Uh, yeah, the memory clock is far lower than NVIDIA's, and it's not using HBM2. Duh, duh. <laughs> no, no, I did not. I wanted to run the benchmarks with minimum um, performance hit and and the iobs would require some encoding on the uh well on el cheapo uh but yeah as far as graphics cards go this was a no-brainer uh i was a bit sad uh and a bit uh scared uh about the prices when i first started to look at it because these things have not devalued at all uh, the used ones, uh, I managed to get lucky and find this one for 75, but they mostly go for like 90 to 100 pounds used. Or when I say used, I mean mine the hell out of. But this one works. It works really well. The moment I got it, I took it apart, redid the thermal paste, and it's it's quiet. Uh, the, the loudest fan is actually the one on the Hyper uh, 103. So, yes, very, very good job there, Asus and uh, AMD, I suppose. So, holding the OS, which is, uh... I keep doing... I keep hitting the wrong keyboard? <laughs> if the stream goes down, that's that's why. Uh, A, C, B. Let's see, I am running KD Neon, which is based on uh, 1804. So, and it's installed on this 750 EVO, uh, 250 gigabyte SSD. It cost me 30 pounds on eBay. It's, it's actually, um, basically it's a SATA SSD. It's a Samsung SATA SSD. So as long as your SATA bus can handle 520 megabytes per second, it'll do it. It'll do it with no issues. But 250 gigabytes for games is, well, it's just not enough. So how about we get ourselves uh, some Western Digital Blue, 500 gigabytes, um, 7200 RPM, but instead of paying 36.99, you can go on eBay and find yourself one for about 10 pounds. I'm not kidding. 500 gigs, 7200 RPM, 10 pounds. That that's like, okay, you're a game drive now. That's what you do. Though, if we, um, once we get towards the end of the video, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> it's possible. I mean, you're not going to have all those many games installed at once, but it's possible. 
the yeah we'll, towards the end of the video we'll talk about possible upgrade routes while trying to stay on the cheap so yeah now all of this needs some power and some power comes in the form of the CX450M. Uh, the Rockstrix specifically recommends at least a 450 watt power supply. And this one, it's nothing spectacular. It, it's the minimum acceptable entry level power supply that you should get at this point. Uh, it's semi modular, uh, so you can cut down on some of the uh, massive cables, which in this case is very important. Um, 450 watts, uh, 80 plus bronze. It, it's really nothing spectacular, but it's really... I mean, I couldn't justify myself uh, buying a second-hand GPU, uh, not GPU, uh, PSU, because I don't trust second-hand power supplies. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to buy something new. And this one, I got it on Amazon, I think, for £53.50. So, yeah. It is... Um, it is the third most expensive item on the list, and I guess, well, <laughs> let's get uh, into the list, shall we? Let me put the stats up here. There we go. As you can see, Inwin, 5599, uh, the motherboard is 3990, uh, the Intel Core i5 was £30, the Seta Hynix was free with a processor, the Cooler Master 103 was 12 75 pounds for the RX 570s, uh, 30 pounds for the 750 Evo, 1020 for the um, hard drive, and of course the power supply, which adds up to a very, very respectable 306 pounds 59p. And that is kind of impressive, especially when it's like, okay, HCBM with sudo so we can get a readout on the RAM. There we go. There we go. 16 gigs of uh, 100 and, uh, or 1600 uh, mega transfers. Uh, DDR3, qu uh, actual quad core with four, uh, just the four threads. A completely passable motherboard, a f functional um, power supply. It's, it's what you need for gaming. And I'm going to make that case right now by, you know, running some benchmarks, as you do. So, Unigen. We have Unigen Heaven and Unigen Superposition. Let's run Heaven first. Unigen Heaven, it's been around a long, long time. It runs on Linux, and I'm running it on the Extreme preset, and we're going to find out exactly how it does. Let's see. Scooch that down here, maybe. Yes. The demo fail time. Yep. If there was ever a time that this um, could catch fire, uh, this is it. <laughs> so here we go. Averaging about 40 uh, something FPS right on the intro scene. Very good, especially on the extreme preset. There's a lot of tessellation and a lot of stuff going on. I could tell you uh, for a fact that for the longest time on the Mesa drivers, you could not run this properly. Because it just didn't work. <laughs> Can't get a BSOD. It's Linux. Right, let's hit the benchmark and let it roll. And yeah, if you have questions, if you have anything you'd like to know, feel free to ask because there's going to be a lot of this on this stream. There's going to be a lot of waiting. And I do intend to do at least one run of each benchmark just to get a sample. I'm not going to use any of them. Um, I'm going to run everything properly and try to get as accurate as possible um, a score f um, or at least an average uh, frame rate for all the games and then I'm going to do the same on this box and if I can wrestle uh, Nori's PC away from her for a little bit on a scale of what resolution are you running? This is 1080p. This is, uh, well, uh, the extreme preset in Unigen Heaven is, uh, 1600 by 900, so true 169, as it were. 
But yeah, no, the the actual thing is running at 1080p. And yeah, I, I'll have, see if I can wrestle uh, Nori's PC away from her for a little bit so I can run um, these very same uh, tests on her system since she has my old 1600, a Ryzen 5 1600, with a GTX 1050 Ti uh, with 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, so it'll be an interesting comparison to have. So yeah, if I can get these three compared, like a bit of a graph going, I think will be interesting. So yeah, once uh, this stream is done, uh, over the next couple of days, I'll try and get all of that done. And uh, I guess just keep an eye on uh, LinuxGameCast.com because that article and those pretty, pretty little bar graphs will be showing up. I'll probably even do some blender. Might as well, right? Test the processor. <laughs> Ah, uh, Unigen Heaven. I have seen this so many times. <laughs> For a point of comparison, um, on this system with the 3700X and the GTX 1080, um, at 1080p with everything else set to extreme, 1080p full screen, I get, uh, I think it's 90 FPS. On average, 90 something FPS on average, which is very respectable considering just how completely and thoroughly unoptimized this particular benchmark is. But then again, it is a benchmark, so it makes sense. Oh, there we go. Nighttime. This particular scene in nighttime is usually heavy on the GPU. Uh, 45. Okay. Not bad. Not bad at all. Those scene transitions really kill the minimum uh, FERPs, but eh, whatever. Let's see. 80 for the bridge pass. There we go, 100 and something for the, uh, the panning shot. Almost there. I wish I made screenshots when I was benching my system. That's usually a very good thing to have, you know. Data points. <laughs> well, yeah, the, just being able to see uh, an AMD card on Linux running this Unigen Heaven on Extreme this well. It, it, it's a little bit chuggy here and there, but everything is rendering properly. That wasn't the case for a long, long time. So, yes, very very happy to see this and don't worry I know for a fact that there are a couple of games that do throw some glitches on screen I hope I can recreate the one in Deus Ex when we get to that <laughs> okay that's the end let's see what our average is and we averaged out 57.8 that's almost almost at the 60 FPS mark for a 300 pound PC how about that? <laughs> I don't, but I'll probably include that in the uh, the final review, Arthur. Okay, so 57.8 with 14.56 on the score. The minimum FPS, I usually need to run this like three or four times before the minimum FPS stops dipping whenever there's a scene transition. That seems to be the thing that actually brings that down. But yeah, that's a very, very nice um, average score right there. So, that's Unigen Heaven. Let's go have a look at Superposition. And I want Superposition because, well, it's... They said that there would be Vulcan, so I want Vulcan. Give me Superposition 1.2, Vulcan Edition. Yes, it's an unknown GPU because... Oh, don't worry, Superposition actually says that it's a uh, 480, I think. Um, give me the specs. Do you have the specs? Yeah, I guess I need to run it before it actually shows me the specs. Uh, whatever. So, uh, let's run this. Let's run Superposition and see exactly how well it does. Because Superposition, it is using Unigen 2 instead of Unigen 1. Uh, and it is much, much more demanding. 
Uh, this loading time, though. And loading times um, are a thing that we're going to be uh, running into a lot. Uh, it's really not loud at all. It's, uh, if I have both of these running at the same time, they both hum at around the, the same volume. So it's like, oh, how nice. <laughs> One thing that is noticeable is that uh, that particular GPU, there is a lot of coil whine coming from it. Like, a lot. Uh, in this loading uh, screen right now, I can hear the coil whine with the headset on. So, yeah. I guess there's a reason that it doesn't, um, it's not as popular as it otherwise could have been. There we go. And with superposition, we're averaging in the 30s on 1080p high. That's, yeah, considerably more demanding. Well, it is a very high-pitched noise, so maybe your ears just can't tell that frequency anymore. And I really want them to have the frickin' uh, Vulcan version of this. I really, 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 really want that. <laughs> and I remember uh, Superposition was on Steam Greenlight. And... Um, it was, um, it was approved on Steam Greenlight, and it's still not on Steam. What the heck, Unigen? Seriously, what the heck? Let me keep the PC on the desk, no coil wine. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> but yeah, it is, um... There are, it's usually during like loading screens and whatnot that the GPU is doing something, usually compiling shaders and whatnot, and it's doing it at full tilt, and yeah, the coil wind becomes very obvious. Very, very obvious. <laughs> yes. And, uh, I'm not limiting, um, the frame rate to the V-blanks, because we're trying to get as much uh, FURPS as possible. So yeah, uh, speaking of uh, limiting to V-blanks, the... This is KDE Neon, I'm using KDE. Uh, one of the things that you should keep in mind is that there is uh, no... Um, what's it called? Uh, the forceful composition pipeline on NVIDIA? Um, there is none of that for the Mesa drivers. You can do some fancy triple buffering to try and get rid of the tearing, or if you have a compositor that can handle it and doesn't impact the performance all that much, you should keep that um, compositor going and you should composite the, uh, the game itself, because that will stop the tearing in-game. And redirecting will help you get some better performance, usually a couple of extra FURPs, but there will be tearing. And uh, by default, KDE does that thing where it disables uh, compositing once something is running. Here we go. So, 1080p high, 4,286 points uh, with, let's see, GPU uh, minimum temperature 45, maximum temperature 78. It gets a bit toasty <laughs> and let's see FERP's average of 3206 that's not bad and as I said earlier this particular um, benchmark sees the 570 as an RX 484 gigabytes however if we go to GLX info and grab uh, the version uh, no it's not the version it's Render? No. Oh, no, it, it is. Okay. OpenGL renderer string. 570 series. Polaris 10. <laughs> so, yeah. The, um... I guess those Mesa drivers still don't report everything accurately uh, between software. But hey, that's the GPU. LSPCI also shows the CPU, yes. 
Um, but yeah, that's the CPU now, uh, or the GPU. Now let's have a look at the CPU. And we have Geekbench 4 and Geekbench 5. Geekbench 4, that's the one we're going to start with because, well, it's the one that I have the most scores in. So let's do that. Geekbench 4. And, uh, well, there's a lot of sitting here waiting for it to finish. <laughs> I'll only do four, uh, five, I'll do it for the, um, the actual review proper, but here we're just going to run, um, Geekbench 4, and then we'll have a look at, uh, the Geekbench website to see how those particular scores are doing. And so far, with just the Unigen benchmarks, it's been doing very good. It's been doing very good. Granted, 1080p high with an average of 30 is a bit meh in 2019, especially when that very same, um, I mean, I don't get 60, but I get 50-something uh, on the 1080. So, yeah, it is 50 or 40. It is a very demanding benchmark, that one. Like, very demanding. So, yeah, if you have... Any questions, any suggestions, hints, thoughts, allegations, things better left than said, let me know. Okay. Should be almost done with the single core. And it, yes, multi-core. Hit those four threads. Hit them hard. <laughs> And yeah, as uh, we get into the games, uh, you, that there is where you'll see some of the really, really glitchy stuff. <laughs> I can tell you that in Tomb Raider, um, there's a part of the benchmark that sometimes doesn't render properly. So if that happens, I'll just run it again so we can get an actual score. Uh, and Dirt Rally is mostly okay. Uh, it freaks out every now and then, but it's it's actually very rare. Deus Ex, Mankind Divided. That's the really, really funky one. Uh, <laughs> I, I, it, it's happened to me twice, um, and how well does the Vulcan run? Well, it runs very well. Uh, there will be, uh, well, Tomb Raider is running Vulcan, and the Talos Principle is also running Vulcan. That's one thing I didn't, uh, I couldn't really find, um, any Proton games that had, uh, built-in benchmarks on my library, I should say that. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, let's have a look-see. Ooh, just under 4,000 on the single score, and, um, 11,597, so 11,600-ish for the uh, multi-threaded score. Okay, let's uh, compare this with my account, which is, well, here's the uh, system that is currently streaming all of this nonsense. 6,000 on the single thread, 38,257 on the multi-thread. There's a bit of a difference there. Uh, let's see, I guess the closest one would be the HP Elite book with a very similar uh, single-threaded score, but much lower um, multi-core score because this is a dual-core um, hyper-threaded part. So, it yeah, it, it makes sense that it would be um, pretty low. This is my old um, work laptop. XPS 13, 93, 60, very respectable. This is my current work laptop, the Dell Precision 7510. Yes, 15,000. <laughs> yeah, it defeats that handily. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, this um, poor, poor 3470 doesn't fare too well uh, in the um, geek benches. All right, so that should do us for the synthetics. Let's go look at games. Steam. 
Stay. Stay. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, I think it's going to start in um, big picture mode because that is usually how this computer works. I turn it on and it goes into big picture mode. Well, that is if it starts at all. Steam, what are you doing? Ah, there we go. <laughs> Hard drive, I need to remember that. It, it takes a while for things to happen. Okay. Come on, hard drive. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not too worried about that because, like I was saying, I, I see this when I'm uh, when I, usually when I turn this on, I see yeah, just just steam. So let's get out of big picture mode and have a look at the library. And oh, hey, who remembers seeing steam like this? <laughs> I did not know this was still there, but it is. <laughs> oh yeah, it's slow. It's a hard drive. Uh, right. So, Baba is You and Dark Souls 3 are like my things. Those are there just because th th these are the games that I actually play on this thing. And I suppose since I uh, hyped up Deus Ex Mankind Divided all that much, might as well get it started. No. Yes. And uh, this being a feral game, uh, you get those pop-ups of annoyance. It's like, you're not running the recommended system. Uh, you're not uh, running the um, uh, recommended drivers. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. It's like, all right, where's the shut up button and just let me play the game? Yes, it's kind of annoying. But at least they give you the option to tell it to stifu. And yeah, okay, the loading's going. You can see the uh, loading bar uh, there down below our two uh, new followers, Deadlytix and uh, Zenai Gamer. XNI Gamer. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Deus Ex. You can do it. And to everyone out there who is watching this uh, in 2019 and still holding out it's like oh but ssds are expensive compared to hard drives and hard drives are fast enough no they're not no they're really really not <laughs> seriously get yourself an ssd save yourself the headache i was going for the cheapest stuff and 500 gigs for 10 pounds is it's all right i'll have to give it that it, it, it is all right but it's not ideal in any way shape or form and yes, SSDs are not that expensive nowadays. You can find, especially used ones, uh, good used ones, for less than uh, 10 cents or 10p per gig. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. There we go. Now, let's look at the options and see what we're running at. We're running at 1080p, no MSAA, no VSync, 79 of FOV. That's the default, so I just left it there. The preset, this is actually ultra with motion blur disabled. That That's the only thing I changed, everything else is on ultra. Okay, right on, just because I hate motion blur. And in this game, it doesn't look good. I mean, it doesn't look good on any game. It's Motion blur is one of those stupid, stupid things that I genuinely do not get why they're there, but it's the world we live in, so. <laughs> you want to cook that PCV or what? Well, we want to see exactly what 300 pounds will get you, right? We want to see exactly the kind of performance that we can get out of it. <laughs> Shadow of War takes up almost 150 gigs now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. How was it? Um, I think the, the biggest one that I have on my library is still XCOM 2. Just because installed, it's over 100 gigs. It's the only one that I, the only one game that I currently own that does that. Though I have a sneaking suspicion that by the time I'm done with this stream and I go to install Destiny 2, once that's all installed and expanded to the hard drive, it might take a bit more. And boy, this loading screen. I started it up two hours ago or so just to make sure it had the proper shaders compiled and we wouldn't have to spend a lot of time on the loading screen, but here we are. <laughs> hey, Macbethwin. There we go. Okay, that's the loading done. Right. Look at those magnificent, magnificent 30 frames a second. 
two biggest games I have currently installed 60 gigs on Kingdom Come Deliverance and 87 gigs on G um, Grand Theft Auto 5. Yes. <laughs> hey, really good stream. <laughs> Thank you, McMethwin. Uh, yeah, it's just showing what you can do with not a whole lot of money and if you're, you know, you skip on a couple of uh, Starbucks and if you're a smoker, you stop smoking for a while or smoke less. Uh, and all of a sudden you find yourself with a little bit extra money. So if you have 306 uh, pounds and 59p to spend, that's the part list right there. And you can see um, exactly the kind of performance you can expect on Linux. And yes, that flashiness, that's, uh, that happens if you have the graphics on Ultra. Uh, if you lower that down to just um, high, it, they disappear. So whatever is causing that is uh, probably one of the shaders that hasn't been fully implemented yet uh, in the Mesa drivers. Formative plus plus. I don't quit smoking, but I'd like to see the unit conversation. UK pan. Yeah. Oh, you'd like to see the unit conversion? Yes, not conversation. I should read. Um, I'm UK to euros. Okay. Um, it's basically one to one. I'm not joking. Uh, <laughs> basically, go on eBay and look up these parts. Seriously, just look up these parts right here. <laughs> Okay, there we go, the results are in. Average of 36 FPS with a minimum, that's, okay, that's respectable, 22.7, and a maximum of 50. On Ultra. Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, on Linux. Although I'm pretty sure everyone out there is going to get this score or very similar, because this game runs like poop. It always has, and uh, from the look of things, it always will. So, yes. Let's, uh, that's Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Let's go Dirt Rally. <laughs> Let's get the glitchy, uh, the glitchy ones out of the way. I say that. Watch the Talos Principle, uh, the hard lock the box. Because it does that sometimes. <laughs> it actually does that sometimes. <laughs> okay. Dirt Rally. This is a game I actually like. Uh, even though it has a built-in, um... Um, actually has a built-in benchmark, but I actually enjoy this game very, very much. As far as racing games go, uh, this one is very nice, and the benchmark is, um, it's actually very heavy on the CPU. Like most games tend to favor the GPU. This one relies on the uh, CPU a lot. So we get an interesting, um, well, we got an interesting... I'm missing a word here. It'll come back to me at some point, but yes, it is interesting. So, settings. 1080p 2x MSAA. That's the default. I left that there. The preset is on ultra. Good. All right. Let's go. <sighs> yes. They really run good on just about any calculator. Yes. On the lowest settings. You can actually play this on a laptop on the lowest settings really, really well. Kudos, major kudos to uh, Feral for actually accomplishing that. But yeah, this is 1080p Ultra. Let's see how well it does. Very smooth off the line. Like, very smooth off the line. That's actually really nice to see. Remember Grand Auto Sport running like poo? Yeah. Uh, Grand Auto Sport 8 got better, um, actually got a lot better, um, uh, the, I think it was the second patch that Feral released, uh, I still had the FX8370E, and it, it ran the game, and it ran the game really, really well. It was really nice to see a game that pretty, um, actually running really well on, uh, on Linux, on that, um, FX CPU. Yeah, and uh, Dirt Rally is no exception. I guess they really nailed it when they did the engine port from uh, Auto Squirt. And this one is just on frickin' point. I mean, 
honestly can't tell uh, if some of the uh, frame variations are coming from the capture card or the game itself, but it looks smooth. Very, very smooth. Well, we got a shot of the uh, starting gate there. <laughs> I wonder if that's the game, like, skipping the, um, like, the cinematic panning camera. And it just shows the, uh, <laughs> the starting gate. I don't get it. Yes. It does look nice. It does look really nice. <laughs> Yeah, there isn't, and the trees and the foliage and everything else is going by very, very fast if you're doing your job well, so it would make sense that uh, it, w it would run well. <laughs> but yeah, 1080p Ultra. I know it doesn't look like it because of the uh, compression that the, uh, texture, uh, the capture card is doing, uh, but that is smooth. Eh, and the, uh, the, I guess, the car reflections would be the big ones. Though, I mean, with this car you have reflections down the side, not so much here at the back. Not on this track, anyway. Yeah, it's just the, uh, the windshields. And I guess the reflection on the, uh, the puddles on the road. The particle effects for the dust and the gravel being kicked up. That would be about it. <laughs> And I remember racing this track, and the first time I did it, I took a right on that previous turn. Because it's like, oh, we're going right here. No, no we're not. <laughs> Alright. Nearing the end here. That's just me, or is the um, AI deliberately going very slow? Oh, did you see that? I'm not sure if that artifact was caused uh, by the capture card or not, but yeah. <laughs> Whatever the camera changes, there's this weird flicker too, so it may have been that. Alright! Total frames, uh, 15,603. Minimum FPS, 40. Average FPS, 75. Max FPS, 102. <laughs> you know... Average FPS of 75, 90, I think with a little bit of tweaking uh, down from Ultra in some of the settings, you can actually get those minimum FPS above 60. That is very nice to see. Very nice to see, especially from an AMD video card on Linux. 75, average FURPS in Dirt Rally. That takes care of that. Let's have a look. Ooh! F1 2017. I know that uh, all of the YouTubers use um, 2018 or 2019. I don't have either of those. Uh, I think 2018 is on Linux, if I'm not mistaken. But I do have 2017, and, um, well, yeah. <laughs> how about flight simulators? Um, well, I guess X-Plane isn't cutting it anymore. Oh, <laughs> There's a lot of mods for it. Um, explain so I don't know I, I don't know the flight simulators really um, really aren't my thing <laughs> the closest to a flight simulator that I'll actually enjoy is uh, airfix dogfighter I played that on stream a while back that that's about as close as it gets to me anyway okay can we skip the Publicity? Thank you. Right. Um, hmm. F2 for the options. Settings. Uh, let's see. What are we working with? Video mode. RX 470, 480, 570, 570X, 580, 580X. Uh, I don't remember a 570X or a 580X, but I. it just may have been my own gap. But yeah, that's... Um, that's the same GPU in all of those uh, all of those graphics cards, and we're running. <laughs> Let's see, we're running 1080p, uh, no anti-aliasing, no a no AF, and advanced ultra high, so as high as it'll go. Right on, benchmark mode, Australia. Yes, less race down under. Let's kick it. 
Guns of Icarus. That was fun when we last played it. That was a fun game. That was a very fun game. <laughs> I still need to... Eventually I'll need to try the supposedly, uh, like, purely co-op campaign. That's just against the AI. But, yeah, no, the... The, the actual multiplayer uh, element of that game was really, really nice. And everyone always says like, oh, gunners are useless, gunners are useless. Are they? Because I played as a gunner and I shot down a lot of stuff. <laughs> Might be something we'll need to look at, Arthurin. And okay. F1 2017 on Ultra. Look at those reflections. Look at the heat coming out of those engines. And why does it look like the car is standing still? The heat is just coming up and not actually... Doesn't feel... The, the air doesn't look like it's moving at all at the back there. I don't know. I guess it wouldn't use as much um, GPU power if it was actually applying the uh, proper speed effect to that heat. <laughs> I guess that's why those fences are so high, right? <laughs> and you know, I hate Formula One games. Uh, I love racing games, like Dirt Rally. It's very, very nice. Uh, this, the Code Masters racing games, especially, they do a very good job of them. But I cannot, for the life of me, um, blocky. Oh yeah. I guess it is, um... Hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is, um... A racing game. So, all that speed is causing the, uh... The encoder to eat poop. Hmm, it seems to be holding. 7,000, 6,000, back to 7,000. I mean, yeah, fast motion, yeah. Yeah, it's usually like the really fast games you're either recording completely lossless or that artifacting is just going to happen. Okay. Uh, there we go. Them's all the specs and uh, minimum frame time 14.2, average frame time, ooh, okay, that's not so good. Uh, 18.12, you kind of want the average frame time to be under 16.6666. Because that is the refresh rate of a that is the time that each um, frame takes to render on a 60 f, uh, 60 hertz monitor, and the average FPS kind of reflects that because we get an average of 55, not quite 60, but then again, this is on ultra. So yeah, it kind of makes sense considering how more demanding this game is when compared to Dirt Rally, and it is very very much more demanding now comes the interesting one this metro 2033 redux has a built-in benchmark but it's not uh, just a matter of running the game telling it to run the benchmark no 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 you actually need to go into the install folder and from there you need to find this file benchmark.sh and I don't have uh, Dying Light installed now. Uh, and let's see, benchmark.sh. Let's uh, cat that file. Cat benchmark.sh. Right, this is what the file contains. Uh, it This line here, I added this line. You need this line if you're trying to run the benchmark on Mesa graphics. Otherwise, it just sec faults. And it's like faults because uh, according to the Mesa developers and the uh, bug tracker that I found about this issue, the game uh, doesn't handle memory allocation properly. So you need to tell glibc to kind of ease up on the uh, memory allocation checks. And once you do that, the benchmark actually runs. And to run the benchmark, we just run benchmark.sh. Boop! <laughs> so yeah. For everyone out there, and this is going to look like it's frozen, like, right now. It's not. Trust me. <laughs> I didn't trust it the first few times either. But yeah, you basically just have to sit and wait for it to do everything. 
Uh, yeah, as long as I can hear the uh, tick, tick, tick of the hard drive, we're good. But yeah, Metro 2033 Redux on Linux, it runs spectacularly well, um, especially if you have an NVIDIA card. Uh, but it is also playable, the game, proper. No, no, it's not Frozen Arthur, and don't do this. <laughs> um, it's, um, yeah, it, the game itself runs just fine. Uh, probably wouldn't want to run it on Ultra, like I'm going to be running this particular benchmark in. Uh, but no, Arthur, and it's not Frozen. Shush. <laughs> But yeah, you you'll see this this is the worst uh the worst performing um game of the batch. And I saved uh Vendetta Curse of the Raven's Cry for last, so <laughs> Yeah. Uh ooh, you can't see the uh the scores. Hold on, let me get rid of the specs. Okay. There you go. Fifteen FPS. Or yeah. Around there somewhere. <laughs> this isn't cinematic. This is uh, 1980s uh, Japanese animation. 12 frames a second, if you're lucky. <laughs> Now, again, keep in mind, this is... You go to the graphics settings and you tilt everything to 11. Except for motion blur, because screw motion blur. Um, yeah, it's poop. It runs like poop. There we go. Maximum FPS of 43. Average FPS of 20. 20.95. <laughs> With that. <laughs> uh, that's so bad. But hey, I can tell you that the game is actually, uh, and the benchmark, uh, actually do very well if you lower like everything to like high high medium just tweak the settings around a little bit and the game actually becomes very very playable at that point so yeah don't run it on ultra if you have an rx um 570 <laughs> 120 fps yes what graphical settings mirror what resolution mirror <laughs> Okay, while Mir is uh, rummaging on that, let's uh, start Rise of the Tomb Raider. Ultra. Somehow I doubt that. Uh, but yeah, no, the the game actually um, the game actually runs uh, very well on Nvidia cards. It's uh, Mesa drivers still have, need to do some stuff. <laughs> uh, it's fine, Arthurian. You you. You, you know, there's always that one person that's like, Oh, I'm getting all these FPS in this game while running at Resolution X. Well, every single bit of evidence seems to point to the contrary, but whatever. Uh, how about you, Tomb Raider? Are you gonna load? Hmm? Hmm? There we go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> On a 486. <laughs> So yeah, thanks for that, Mir. We kind of needed that one person to do that, so it was you this time around. Okay, and once again, this may look like it's frozen. Trust me, it's not. Again, if you don't believe in the power of SSDs in 2019, you too are full of lies. Because look at this. <laughs> Just, come on. Chop, chop. No? All right. <laughs> we'll wait then. Oh, someone's playing Dirt Rally. I can't read the name. <laughs> yes, SSDs are amazing. Get an SSD. Because this is still loading. I can hear the tickety tick 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 of that hard drive right now. <laughs> you know, if these ever go retail, I'm just going to go with a single uh, 500 gigabyte SSD. Because... Yeah, oh no, the, the fault here is absolutely the slow hard drive. It's The game is loading, and there are no shaders to compile because it's still running the same... Um, still running the same driver version, same GPU, 
whatever. So there is no um, shader compilation going. It's all the slow hard drive. There we go. Progress. <laughs> all right. Let's look at the options. We are running this at 1080p with FXAA on, because that was a default. And the graphics are on very high. I didn't change anything else. Um, uh, you can see the vignette blur. That's fine. That's the blur. Usually it's around the borders. And that's fine by me. Uh, and yeah, everything else is just the default very high preset. Rise of the Tomb Raider with Vulcan. Default very high. Let's start that benchmark. Well, I say start that benchmark. Let's start the next loading screen, which also takes a while for... I don't know what reason, but it does. So, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> so you can find some NVMe SSDs for 10 cents a gig. Yep. Um, can't do NVMe on this one because the motherboard doesn't have an M.2... It doesn't have an M.2 port, but it does have a second... Uh, I think it's 4X or 8X um, full-size PCIe port. So you might be able to get away with one of those uh, riser cards with a couple of M.2 ports on it. Yes. <laughs> Would have traded that 8 gig of uh, memory RAM for an SSD. The RAM was free. That's the thing. It was um, 16 gigs, 30 pounds for the processor, the RAM, and the original motherboard that I got that I ended up not using. Uh, and... Yeah, so that's there's no money to be saved there. There is money to be saved uh, on the case because yes, it is a very pretty looking case, but it is. I guess I, we can put the uh, specs back on while it does its thing. No, no that's the chat. Uh, there we go. Specs. It is a the Inwin three hundred one is a very good looking case, but it's not <sighs> spectacular. Um. And the airflow is very restricted. It's far more expensive than it should be for a uh, micro ATX mini tower. So, yeah. Oh, I don't expect to, to use them as the boot drive. That uh, 750 Evo, it basically pegs the, um, the SATA bus and says, what's the speed you can do, pal? And it goes, 500-ish eh, megabytes per second. All right, we're doing that. So, yeah, no, that that SSD is very nice. But, yeah, no, the case, there's definitely money to be saved there. You can probably find a cheaper, and it won't be as good looking, but it will be cheaper, and chances are just as functional case. The... Oh, look, that didn't render properly. Behold the poppin'. And poppin' again. Okay, I guess we're rerunning this particular benchmark because that first bit didn't render. <laughs> uh, yeah, so case we could save some money. Uh, what else? I really am not comfortable dropping anything else, really. Okay, let's completely ignore this score. It's 80, 63, 65, but we're going to have to ignore it because on the last scene... A chunk of the scenery didn't load, so we're going to have to run this again. Okay? Okay. <laughs> uh, can't use it, but... Yeah, no. New egg. Okay, let's do it again. Uh, hopefully this second run, the load time won't be as long, because it's already in RAM, I say. Wishful thinking. Pretty please. Ah, there we go. Cool. <laughs> All right. Let's run this again because, yeah, no, can't have flying fences and platforms just popping up out of nowhere. Okay. Rise of the Tomb Raider on very high. This, this is one of those games that was used as a benchmark in all the websites and all the YouTubers. It's like everyone did Rise of the Tomb Raider. And then I, Shadow of the Tomb Raider came out. It's like, that's the new one. All right. Hey, Farrell, can we get Shadow of the Tomb Raider on Linux, please? That'd be nice. I'd, I'd give you money for that. It, it, 
Not because you stopped sending us keys or anything, but I totally give you money for that. <laughs> uh, the, uh, ah, there we go. That platform is rendering properly this time, and there's still some popping in the foliage, but that always happens. That's just Tomb Raider for you. A Data XPG SX80 200 Pro. Yeah. Two terabytes for 280 euros? How long ago was that, Arthur? Because that's not a bad price. Um, my one terabyte SSD that I got for the Ryzen box was 115 pounds at the time. Okay, that's a bit different on the score. So the Mountain Peak was 79.79, so that's around the same. Syria was 62.30, so a bit lower. And the Geothermal Valley was 59.35, so... Oh, that was today. All right. <laughs> uh, 5935, just under um, 60 on average. So we get an overall score of 67.41 FERPS on a 300 pound PC. That's very good. Very good indeed. This, this was the game that uh, when I ran the benchmark uh, after I put everything together and I ran this benchmark, it's like, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. We're actually onto a bit of a winner. So, uh, personal favorite uh, benchmark of Linux Gamecast, the Talos Principle. And uh, I'm kind of glad that they changed the default to be the 64-bit version now. That was getting a bit old, but now it is the default. You just hit it, done. QLC does not count. It counts. It counts. Uh, if you don't mind a little bit of latency. <laughs> okay. The Telos Principle. One of the very first few games to properly implement Vulcan. Uh, and it took them a while. But they managed to get it really, really down. Yes. <laughs> Virgo Serena. I've heard that song so many times because, well... <laughs> okay. Graphics options. 1080p. We're uh, setting the Max 3D rendering to 2560 by 1440. That's QHD. And the multi is at 4x. In the performance... Everything's on Ultra. Those are the settings you kind of want to run if you want these cores to be comparable with what we're doing in that one thread in our uh, forums on LinuxGameCast.com. These are the settings you want to be running. So, let's kick it. <laughs> and uh, this one I might have to run it a second time as well just because sometimes it'll have a bit of a freeze. Oh, and if you're prone to motion sickness, Look away now. <laughs> because that jittering on the camera. I thought they'd gotten rid of that, but no, no, that's still there. Okay. So, yeah, uh, it, I may have to run this a second time because usually when um, the first time you run it, when the character picks up the first Tetris piece up there, the, it'll freeze and we can have. Oh, no, it didn't do it. No, nice. Behold Very nice. Child. Very nice you indeed. <laughs> from the dust, and you walk in my garden. Hear now okay. my voice. That's actually and surprising. Know that I am your maker, and I am called Elohim. I had raid one SSD for home. In my really good speeds. Well, I have YOLO raid for uh, two Samsung 850 Evos, 250 uh, 250 gig as well. So I get 500 gigs at in and around a gigabyte per second and that's my um that's my recording rate it's uh when i record like the games that you see on saturdays i do it to that particular raid and it's sometimes even one gigabyte per second is not enough if it's like a racing game and it's like all right let's uh, try and make this work properly <laughs> nvme is awesome seriously What's that? You like PCIe speeds for your storage? We can do that. <laughs> Two x eight terabyte RAID one for data. Huh. I mean, if if that is going to be reliable data, then I guess you do need the redundancy. 
but yeah. And worlds, and we I did them are uh, made of words. Uh, before in I put words, the Western Digital team, NVMe um, SSD things. in the we Ryzen box, I had a um, Your actions give I had a YOLO rate of uh, Western Digital Blues. <laughs> For games, and yeah, at that point, for games, that was actually very, very respectable. For like two terabytes of data, very good speeds. <laughs> 10 series NVENC struggles on this one? Yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I mean, it's seems to be holding around 7... No, oh, as I say that, it drops to like 5,700. Yeah. It would be nice to get a better hardware encoder, but yeah. The 1080, it, 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 it's been holding very well, and thank you very much once again, Martin. I will keep saying this forever and ever, but yeah. This this 1080, it saved me so much money up to this point. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, that's that done. 70.3! How's that for Vulcan? <laughs> So, yeah, uh, both um, Tomb Raider and uh, the Talos Principle here were run with Vulcan, and this AMD GPU Rad V uh, Vulcan driver is doing very, very well. So, since I guess there's not much left in this particular list, let's just get to the last one. Vendetta, Curse of the Raven's Cry. This is a bit of a joke uh, for Linux Gamecast Weekly. Uh, if you don't know what we're on about, that's okay. You don't need to. Trust me. <laughs> but yeah, this game, uh, the developer uh, at one point said that um, it wasn't to us specifically, but he basically said, no, you have uh, really good hardware, but you're using it wrong for the most part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess I could just do software encoding it medium. <laughs> uh, Alright, let's just skip the cutscene, please. Thank you. Please don't crash. Okay. <laughs> this is the one game that I was really worried about crashing. Uh, yeah, so the developer said, you have good hardware, you're just not using it right. Uh, so, yeah, that's the one. You have the right hardware, but it's in the wrong configuration? <laughs> So, based on that, um, when we threw chairs at uh, Curse of the Raven's Cry, here, let me hide the um, the specs so you can get this in all its glory. Uh, <laughs> we got MT to join us for the review, uh, Mr. Michael Tehan. And we, yeah, it was um, because he had a 780 Ti, and the developer said that the game was optimized to run on a GTX 780. So, 780 Ti, it would be perfect, right? That would be the ideal thing. And we all got poop for scores. Uh, so, yeah, it, it sort of became a joke. It's like whenever you do a, um, a hardware upgrade on your box, you install this game and you run the benchmark because it has a built-in benchmark. It's a joke benchmark. You'll see why in a moment, but yeah. I'm running um, 1080p, no anti-aliasing. Uh, and everything is as high as it'll go, except for VSync and use safe area interface, whatever that is. So, yes, let's look at uh, said alligator's cloaca. <laughs> this, what you're about to see, is uh, the benchmark for <laughs> um, Vendetta Curse of the Raven's Cry. The, the game that first came out, and it was just called Raven's Cry. But it was panned so thoroughly on Steam and by everyone else on the internet. Ooh, look at the pop-in. And the jittering. And the pop-in again. Uh, more pop-in. More pop-in. And we're under that tree and it was still popping in. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> now you might be thinking, you're running this on a hard drive, aren't you? Yes, I am. So... Let's do what we did with Tomb Raider. Let's reduce the pop-in by running it a second time. Eh? I mean, with Tomb Raider, it fixed it. It rendered everything just fine on the second pass, right? Let's do it again. <laughs> 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 
that is the render distance on max. And I still only got an average of like, what was it? 36 FPS. So yeah, let's, uh, let's see what this second pass shows for us. Shall we pop in, pop in jitter, pop in, pop in, pop in, pop in, pop in, <laughs> pop, 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 pop. <laughs> oh, it's still popping in. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> so, current FPS uh, doesn't matter. Uh, average FPS, 36. Your current uh, hardware supports high detail settings. Change it in graphic settings. Yeah, all right. Go on, change it. <laughs> okay, so it supposedly it changed the, um, the graphic settings to high. Let's see how well that runs. Uh... <laughs> Uh, it's just funny. It, it's just funny. And they re-released the game, and it was still just as broken. Come on, you guys! <laughs> okay, there's popping in. Still popping in. Nope, that's still just as bad. Alright, and I'm pretty sure our average FPS is now lower. It might still come back up, maybe. Eh, 36, okay. We did hit 36 at the end there. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, this is it. Um, the, the, this is uh, Vendetta, the Curse of the Raven's Cry uh, benchmark. And yes, you did have to register your CD key with them, and I'm pretty sure I have like three or four emails from them from um, how often I've started the game today. So, yeah. That was it. That was El Cheapo. Let me put the specs back up. Inwin 301, uh, DQ77 motherboard, an Intel i5 3470, 16 gigs of SK Hynix um, 30, uh, 1333, overclocked to 1600, uh, Cooler Master Hyper 103 on the processor, uh, an Asus, Asus Radeon uh, RX 570, 4 GB ROG Strix, Samsung 750 Evo 250, Western Digital Blue 7200 RPM 500 gigabyte, and a Corsair CXM 450 watts. All of that for these scores that you saw just now, 306 pounds. Honestly, that's that's pretty good. Uh, I, I can show you Derp Souls 3, but it doesn't have a built-in benchmark. It does run very well, though. It, it It's actually... Um, Let's see. Derp Souls. If you count the free RAM. Yes, the, the RAM was free. <laughs> so it is being counted. Um, yeah, it, and you can find like a motherboard with a, um, a processor and RAM for really cheap on eBay. And all I wanted was like bare minimum. Let's go for, uh, mind your eyes, uh, pure white uh loading screen uh, <laughs> uh like yeah the i the minimum was a um quad core Th that's all i needed that's all i wanted a quad core at minimum oh uh and yes it blinks as you're starting it and I, I don't know why but it does <sighs> Oh, don't tell me you're you're going to run everything else and now ah okay. <laughs> it's taking a while. <laughs> For a moment there, I got worried. From software. By software. To software. Alright. Derp souls. Just a little bit, just running around a little bit, just because uh, I mean uh, the Steam controller is a little bit out of hand, so mouse and keyboard will have to be. <laughs> I have started a new character uh, just because the um, cloud saves don't work over Proton. Don't ask me why. Uh, you can't. Uh, the character that you start on a computer doesn't transfer to another computer. So yeah, this. Well, I made this character to look like me, basically. So yeah. And yeah, the game does work very, very well. Uh, which one is the A button? E? 
E? Ah, yes. Well met. It is. <laughs> uh, mm, I don't know. E again. Yes. So, yes. Let's see, let's go to some place uh, where we can see travel to the high wall of Lothric. <laughs> yeah, though, this um, Dark Souls 3 is running at, uh, it's either high or very high, 1080p as well. And it runs super well. It's like 300, um, 300 pounds and you can play some Proton games really, really well. The dragon. <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> There's a bit of a piss filter around this area, but yeah. <laughs> Here. It's, uh, it's very nice. I need to change the... Uh, <laughs> I would need to change the uh, sensitivity to be able to play with this with the mouse because as it stands... Oh, hello, hello. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna die. <laughs> I have no idea what the button to use the Estus Flask is. <laughs> F? No, that's to change the thing. Okay. Well, I can heal like this. How about that? <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> okay. I have no idea what the um, keyboard controls for this game are because I've always played it with a controller. And it's designed to be played with a controller. So, yeah. Okay. I guess that wraps up this teeny tiny little video for this very small, very cheap, uh, but not cheap looking PC what I put together. Yes, there are improvements that can be made and I hope, or I expect, everyone watching this, uh, even if it's the like uh, finalized edited version uh, that shows up on YouTube to accompany the article that will go and show all of the uh, benchmarks, proper benchmarks with proper scores and some proper graphs for you to look at. And some pictures, obviously. Um, keep an eye out for that, LinuxGameCast.com, and yes, do let me know what you change from those, um, from those specs you see on the top left there. Let me know what you change while still keeping the cost down as low as possible. Let me know, and, uh, don't forget, tomorrow is Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. On Thursday, Jordan will be, uh, doing his thing on, um, Friday. Ven will be doing the uh, Friday night foobar, and of course on um, on Saturdays comes Linux Gamecast Weekly, the big show. <laughs> so, with a couple of uh, backstabs, as this game calls it, I shall bid you adieu, and I will see you tomorrow. Join me then for some good old Linuxy news. Bye. I don't know how to emote. I wanted to do the... Where are the emotes? Oh, okay, R is the thing. No, 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 no. I don't know. Okay. Bye, everyone. <laughs>